Awaken! Awakey, wakey! Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines surprised me by making me think of the future more than the past, and that's pretty impressive for a game that's over a decade and a half old. However, that doesn't mean that I didn't walk away from Bloodlines disappointed. It's a really flawed game. It's up there as one of the jankiest games I've ever played. And as someone who heavily dislikes stigma surrounding mental health, there is an uncomfortable amount of that in this game. I had to do it. You do understand. It was her or me. You should get out of here. This place is bad news. Uh, pardon me. The Source engine was not prepared to handle a game this ambitious. This is a game with FPS and also third-person melee combat, a stealth system, and branching dialogue, all developed on an engine that wasn't even finished at the time, with an arduous three-year development cycle that was forced by the publisher to end prematurely before the game was even finished. <sighs> Said Brian Mitsoda, the game's lead writer, we were told to wrap it up in a matter of months, at a point where we knew that was going to require a lot of crunch. It was pretty obvious at this point that we weren't considered a very important project anymore. Even putting aside the game's rocky development, this game struck me as too overcrowded with mechanics for its own good. There are a lot of interlocking systems that are just not playing nice with each other. And that's disappointing, because this game left an absolutely incredible first impression on me. Speaking in modern game terms, the tutorial made this game out to be a combination of Deus Ex's RPG and level design, with Fallout New Vegas's writing, tone, and conversational systems, all with vampire powers and narrative tropes sprinkled throughout, and saying that out loud? It sounds like exactly my jam. It's a shame that the game is less than the sum of those parts. Like, the level design isn't... it isn't bad, it's just not Deus Ex good. Y you know what, that's a lofty standard. Bloodlines levels are fine. They're fine. And thinking that thought while playing this game is when it hit me. This game's a hell of a lot like The Outer Worlds, isn't it? I adored The Outer Worlds. It was my favorite game of 2019, after all. But I'd be lying if I said that its level design was outstanding and memorable. Bloodlines and Outer Worlds have a lot in common, structure-wise. Instead of a massive New Vegas-sized map, Outer Worlds and Bloodlines both split into smaller hub areas, though Outer Worlds hubs are a lot larger than Bloodlines. Outer Worlds, of course, was a much more polished game. It also featured much better sexual diversity and representation than Bloodlines, which struck me as a, uh, a game for 2004 heteronormative men. Let's put it that way. Like, don't get me wrong, a lot of Bloodlines politics are engrossing and thought-provoking, but it's hard to hold on to that praise when the female face of the game is... that. But Outer Worlds learned from those mistakes. It's a lot more tasteful, and actually more enjoyably funny than Bloodlines, and I don't think that's as heretical a statement as some of you might think, because these two games actually share some key staff. Playing Bloodlines after The Outer Worlds made me feel less awful about Bloodlines' mistakes, because it felt like the developers learned from those mistakes in future games. It was a neat reminder of how far a lot of these people have come over the last couple decades. And that's going to be a cautiously awkward segue into talking about Bloodlines 2, which was announced almost immediately after I announced that I was going to play Bloodlines 1 a couple of years ago. Like, phew, good timing. Good thing they announced a sequel, or I might have had to admit that I just wanted to roleplay as Taika Waititi's character in What We Do in the Shadows. You will not notice anything out of the ordinary. No, we certainly hope not. Let's just, let's just keep going. Bloodlines 2 is, of course, not out yet at the time of recording. If not for some delays, it might have been out by now, but it's not. Like its predecessor, it's also been having a seemingly rocky development cycle. Hardsuit Labs has delayed the game twice, and the second delay came with the news that its two lead writers, including a lead writer from the original Bloodlines, were being let go from the production. But at the same time, there's evidence that Bloodlines 2 is learning from its predecessor's mistakes. Rather than having a bunch of different systems that don't efficiently talk to one another, the team is apparently focusing on more of a fast-paced, Dishonored-esque angle, saying to Gamasutra, It's one of those things where you focus on a thing and make it good. It's another set of challenges that you don't have to take on if you decide to make one thing really good. Brian Mitsoda also mentioned to Rock Paper Shotgun that they're putting in more research to make the Malkavians a more tasteful, less stigmatizing representation of mental illness. Though, this was nine months before he was let go from the project, so... 
Shrug. This place is bad news. Uh, pardon me. It's a mishmash between optimism and pessimism, but I have a small hope that, at the very least, Bloodlines 2 will learn from some of its predecessor's mistakes, at least. And even if it doesn't, we're still seeing other designers of the original Bloodlines moving on and creating better work, and in spite of Bloodlines' flaws, that's a very encouraging sight to behold. I look forward to seeing where a lot of this crew goes next, together or not.